What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 59 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at dive maps. First, we're going to set up a really simple map where we dive underwater and then surface back up. And then after that, we're going to make some more complicated dive examples. And then after that, we're going to make an underwater cave. And then from there, we're going to explore diving and then diving even further down and having multiple depths. With that said, let's get into it. So. The very first thing you need to know is that making a dive map is actually very easy. The key to all of this is having deep water. So this is just the regular outside tile set that I'm using. And I'm going to show you in just a little second, but right here at the very top, this is an auto tile for deep water. So we're just going to take that and paint some deep water right here. There we go. This will be our little patch of dive water. So let's go into our database and check out our outside tile set. The terrain tag right here of our deep water is five. Deep water is the only thing that has terrain tag five. So if you ever want to make any other kind of water for your player to be able to dive in, you have to set it to terrain tag five for that tile. So now that we've got some deep water tiles here with terrain tag five, let's make an underwater map for us to dive to. So the very one thing that's extremely important for your, your dive maps is paying attention to the like the dimensions of the map. So, as you can see in the bottom right here, this map is a 30 by 30. So, let's make a, another 30 by 30 underneath it. New map. We'll just call this one Underwater. And its width should be 30, and its height should be 30. And its tile set, let's make that Underwater, actually. There we go. Let's change that background music. I think there's an Underwater just background song you can use. There is. Cool. And let's lower that volume because I don't like to get my ears blasted out when I play this game. Anyway, there we go. Let's make our underwater tile, like our underwater map now. Excuse me. And um, let's just really quickly paint a whole bunch of ground in here. Let's use the auto tile version of it actually. And then now let's make a light patch. So check this out. On the map up above, we can also check the tiles of our deep water. Because this is gonna this is gonna matter. Well, it's good to make them match up, and by good I mean it's a like almost a necessity. So just follow me here. What we gotta do here is on tile eleven nineteen. You can see in the bottom right that the tile that I've selected is eleven nineteen. Eleven nineteen down to fourteen twenty. Let's make those our bright. So we gotta go to eleven nineteen. Do to fourteen twenty. Boop. There we go. So this is what corresponds with our map up above. Oh, excuse me. There we go. Now, let's just build some walls around it really quick. I like building walls in Pokemon. They're really easy to set up the um, in the tile set. I just kind of I just kind of jive with them, you know. Anyway, something like this pretty easy underwater map. Oh. Something like that. There we go. And then we can just add, actually, let's put it here. There we go. You'll notice that there's two types of two types of grass right here, where this grass is on a lighter uh, ground, and then this grass is on a darker ground. And if you wanted to, you could make like a chasm where you go and explore. And in fact, let's actually do that right now. Let's do, uh, let's make this map a little bit wider, shall we? Like, so what you could do is dive down under here and then resurface up over here. Let's make it like that. Oh wait, did I not copy? Oh, I copied from the wrong layer. Durr. Okay, here we go. Something like that to over something like that. Cha-ching, there we go. This is looking pretty nice already. Now what we gotta do is just take one of these, grab our handy dandy paint bucket, and boom, fill that sucker in. Now look at that. Now this map is kinda looking a little pathetic and small. Whatever, we'll expand upon it a little bit later. Anyway, all we've gotta know, all you gotta know right now is when you dive down on tile 1119, you'll arrive here, 1420, you'll arrive here, and anywhere in between. So, check this out. Let's run our game right now. It's actually that easy to set up a dive map. All we have to do now is edit the metadata, and uh, then you'll see. Check this out. I'm going to press F9 to open the debug menu, then go to Information Editors right here, Edit Metadata. Now, let's edit the metadata of our map. 
This is just called Tutorial 59, because this is the 59th tutorial. That's a lot of tutorials, isn't it? Anyway, Dive Map. What this does is, it's, as you can see on the right side of the screen, it specifies the underwater layer of this map. Use only if this map has deep water. So, our map does have deep water, and we have an underwater run right here. So, the, the map underneath ours has been specified. So now, when we dive, it'll take us to the tiles, like to the coordinates underneath. So, check this out. I'm gonna surf right onto it, and it's just gonna work. It's gonna be great. So, if I, temp if I attempt to dive while not standing on a deep water, then I can't dive. Like, I'm mashing enter right now. But if I go onto deep water, it'll ask me, do you want to dive? Yes, I do. Let's dive right now, shall we? Whoa, and now we're deep underwater. And look, we're in the exact same coordinate that we were when we initiated the dive. Now check this out. Though it works in reverse as well. So since our dive maps are linked and set up properly, if we attempt to surface, so I'm hitting enter right now. If we attempt to surface while not standing on a, like underneath a deep water tile, it won't work. But if we go underneath where a deep water tile is on our above map, then we can hit enter and surface. Check that out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Right? So, one thing that's important to note is diving and surfing are different states. So right now, I'm technically not surfing, I'm diving. And this will come into play later, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind in the back of your head right now. So, since we don't have a, um, since we don't have deep water above us for these tiles, we can't surface, but let's work on adding that right now. So, let's go back to our underwater map, and we'll notice that this is on tile 1919 over to 2220. So, this starts at around 1919. Put that right there. Wait, did I not? Am I not copying from the proper layers? There we go. And put that onto 2020. There we go. So, 1919 over to 2220. And then we can just surround this with rocks or something, so that way it's kind of like a, a secret little secluded zone that you could go to. You know, maybe we could put some uh, little sand there. So now it's like a, a nice little area that you could go to. You know, if you wanted to, you could put a little item there. Like, screw it. Let's uh, let's go add an item real quick. Copy that. Paste it. Great ball. What an item. Let's give him make it a master ball. You know what I'm saying? It's quite an item. There we go. Now, if you go over here, you'll get you'll get the master ball. How amazing! <laughs> so now that that tile. Since now that there's uh, deep water on that tile there, we should be able to surface from the map beneath. So let's let's dive once more, shall we? Gyarados, you surf. Yes, he did. Wow, look at him go. So I can't get over there. I want to. I'm gonna have to dive. Woo! So it warps us now down to the map underneath at those exact coordinates. Now, since there's deep water up above us, we can hit enter and dive. It's all dependent on the coordinates, but now we're back over here on this side, and we can go and get that Master Ball. Heck yeah, I'm gonna call that a victory. That's pretty cool. That's a really basic example of how you could use Dive in your games if you want. You could take this and make long sprawling paths of deep water, as long as you make sure that they line up with the map underneath. If you want to, you theoretically don't have to use the bright ground here, but I think that it's a very bad idea not to, because how if, if it's all the same color, how will your player know where they can surface and where they can't surface? So using this bright ground is highly, highly recommended, very strongly recommended. Anyway, now that that's all said and done, let's make an underwater cave. There's an added layer of complexity here that you might not be expecting, but I'll break it down for you and show you how to get it running nice and smoothly. So... First things first, let's just make ourselves a little cave entrance right here. Something pretty simple, nothing too crazy. Let's uh, let's just make this look like that. Oh, oops. There we go. We want to use this tile and uh, this tile. And there we go. Boom. Now we got our now we got ourselves a nice little entrance here. Excuse me, I'm feeling extra burpy today. I don't know why. Anywho, so we got ourselves our cave entrance. Now. Let's make a new map and call this one Underwater K. 
cave. And this one will also be underwater. The width and height don't really matter too much. Let's make it so that way the background music is still underwater. Lower that volume a little bit. Boom. There we go. So, let's make the entrance to our cave really quick. This shouldn't be too difficult. What I like to do is actually go and take a cave entrance and post it on this layer. And then take the brightness and post it on the layer underneath. And then take some terrain, paint it under there. So when we enter, we'll actually... Like, this will be layered above us in priority, and this will be beneath us in priority. So it kind of looks like we're walking on the glow. I always think that's kind of a cool effect. Anyway, let's make it so that way when we're in this map... Oh, excuse me. I don't want to use my paint bucket. When we're in this map, we can surface kind of like here in the center. And now let's really quickly just draw some walls around it. And did I mention how much, I don't know, it's like a like a cathartic thing, you know, like, a, like therapy mapping. I just really like mapping in Pokemon games. What can I say? I should probably do more of that. I should probably uh, do more of that on my Twitch channel, if you know what I'm, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I got some uh, I got some games to be working on. Anyway, here we go. Something pretty simple. Take this, open up our paint bucket, paste that in. Here we go. Here's our little underwater cave. So, if we wanted to, we could just do a simple transfer here. But I'm going to show you why that's not a good idea. So, let's actually go here. Oh, I got to cancel out of this. Let's go here and make it so that way on player touch then it'll transfer the player into our underwater cave facing up so i'm going to show you why this is a bad idea check this out one remember earlier in the tutorial when i mentioned that surfing is a different state than diving well walking is obviously a different state from surfing or diving as well. So considering your player states, there's walking, there's surfing, there's diving, there's many more also. You can get on the bike, whatever. Anyway, one thing to consider is that on a map transfer, oh wait, why did I open that up? There we go. On a map transfer, your player's state is reset. So if I transfer into the cave, I'm now walking underwater. And that's wrong. That's very wrong. What can we do to make it so that way we retain diving as we transfer? And I'll show you, actually. It's uh, a little trick that I pulled right out of the scripts. So, I went down to the P-Field Field Move script. Script? I keep on saying script. I mean to say script. There it is. And then I scrolled down to around line 319 in this script. I gotta emphasize that T there. <laughs> and this is just the dive section. This is where they dedicated all the logic, all things dive are related here. And there's a little bit here at the end where I copied this, Colonel PB cancel vehicles, Pokemon global diving equals true, PB update vehicle. So these three lines, I used these to set myself back to the diving state. So essentially, if you can if you can dive, this is how it transfers you into a into the diving state. So I took these co these lines and I actually put them in a script command after the transfer has occurred. So on transfer, I'm set back to walking. Now instead, let's go to the scripts and just let me get rid of these extra spaces there. So now we've got these three lines running after we transfer. So we transfer in and then after that, we uh, we are put back into the diving state. So this way, we can actually retain our diving. Now check this out. I'm outside of the water cave, and now I'm diving again. So that still didn't look too great. Oh, that doesn't look too great either. Oh yeah, it's because I haven't set an exit transfer. So what I did while I was actually testing this and messing around with it was ultimately made an event like this, where you play the door exit, there's a screen fade, you play another thing, and there's more fades, but this line of code here is the same, so this is how we retain our diving state on map transfer. Funnily enough, the same thing can be used for surfing, and I can cover that at a later time, but if you wanted to make a water cave that you surf into, say, like, let's say there's a water cave on an island up here, and the entrance is something that you have to surf into, you would want to do the same thing, but for surfing, 
where you would call, I think, PB start surfing on the transfer, and then you would get in in the surfing state. Anyway, now that all of that is said and done, let's ins let's just edit this event real quick. I'm, I'm going to make it not look so crappy. I'm going to add... Where is it? Okay, yeah, I'm blind. There it is. So, instead of fading to color over the course of 20 frames, it's going to fade to black, then it's going to transfer, and then we're just going to really quickly wait, eh, whatever, we'll make it wait 20 frames, then insert the change screen color tone fade back into color. There we go. So, now it won't look so bad and it will mask the fact that we are transitioning back into the dive state. So here's our water cave, we go in. Oh, <laughs> the fade was done in the wrong order. Let me quickly mess, <laughs> how did I mess that up? Okay, what we need to do is start the fade, then wait, then start the transfer, then wait. We have to have multiple waits here. Oh my gosh, I transferred immediately and then it faded. Yeah, let's instead do something like this. Fades to black, now we're in diving. Whoa, if you wanted to, you could speed that up a little bit, but it perfectly masked the fact that we go into our walking state and then back into the diving state. So what we could do is actually copy this, go back in here, and then instead of transferring us into the cave, transfer us out of the cave, facing down. There we go. So. Now, let's make a place for us to surface to. Let's make a cave that we can actually rise up into. And uh, I'm gonna make it on this layer. New map, we'll call this uh, Sea Cave. And this will use, you guessed it, the cave's tile set. And this actually, check this out, we're gonna make it a different dimension or have different uh, width and height than the level beneath it. So let's make it so it's 39, oh, whatever, 39, and 30 high, and the music will instead change to cave, I guess? What does this even sound like? I don't really listen to this, like, MIDI. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good at all. I'm gonna lower the volume on that just because it doesn't sound too good. Anyway, so here's our cave. What we can do now is do our same trick as before, where we look at the coordinates, but now we're doing it in reverse. So we've got our underwater cave here. And if we choose to surface on this map, on this tile, we'll arrive at coordinates 8, 7. So, let's go into our sea cave. And on the second layer, let's find 8, 7. And I'm, on, I'm using the paint bucket here, I don't really want to. There we go. Let's see, 8, 7. And it's just, I think it was 3, right? Or was it 4? Yeah, it's 3, okay. So here will be where we arrive from when we choose to surface on this map. However, let's make this dark water instead, the, uh, the, the dive water, and surround that with a little pool. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I mean, ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, not like this whole picture here doesn't look too great, but we're going to work on it. We're going we're gonna to beautify this in just a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. That's nice. Something like this, where what you could do... Something like that, there we go. And from here, it's just making a standard cave. What you want to do with your own mapping, you could do that if you want to mess around with it and make a complex cavern out of this. Well, you could do that. Right now, what we're gonna do, since this is all just an example, we're gonna make something super simple, and then you can use your imagination when it comes to imagining uh, just how crazy the rest of this cave could be. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that's a nice cave. <laughs> There we go. That's better. I didn't mean to use the... I keep on accidentally using that paint bucket. Goodness gracious. Anyway, so the, the most important thing here, though, is that we are aligned with the coordinates of these tiles. This is 8, 7. This is 10, 8. Let's go over here. This is 8, 7. This is 10, 8. So the whole, like, deep water is aligned. So now what we need to do is edit some metadata again. Check this out. This is kind of important. I'm bringing this up now and showing you this, so that way you don't do it in your own game. This is a big mistake. If you are in the diving state, and you are on a map that doesn't have a corresponding dive map, so right now we're in the underwater cave, and we haven't set the dive map above us yet. If you are in this state, 
and you hit enter, your game will crash. I'll show you. Check this out. Oh, no. It's going to say, hey, I can't find the map up above you. So instead, I'm just going to friggin' crash. So let's relaunch our game and learn from our mistake. And let's add that dive map in our metadata. I'm going to hit F9. I'm going to go to information editors. I'm going to edit metadata. And I'm going to make it so that way the sea cave has a dive map. And the dive map will be underwater cave. Here we go. So right now, since the map that we're in has a corresponding dive map and we hit enter, we don't crash. Now, we're still in the diving state and the corresponding map has a dive map now. So hitting enter does not cause a crash. Now, let's navigate to those coordinates that have deep water up above. Here we go. Light is filtering down from above. Would you like to use dive? You betcha. I'm rising up into this cave right now. Whoa. And now we're surfing in the cave. And now we're walking in the cave. That's pretty neat, isn't it? That's how you do underwater caves. If you wanted to, you could get really crazy. Check this out. If you wanted to, you could make another water pool over here and then expand this map so that way the coordinates match. And you could have like a cave that kind of has you bouncing back and forth between dive. That's pretty cool. But speaking of bouncing back and forth between dive, what if instead you wanted to make a dark chasm that you could instead dive further into? Well, I hate to hate to be the guy who destroys the magic of this, but the rest of it would be done via eventing, and I'll show you. The way the reason I say I hate to destroy the magic of this is because eventing is something that I love to do and am familiar with. But at the same time, it almost feels like you're brute forcing it and just like doing things your your own way. Like, not it. You're not doing it with like custom scripts or anymore. You're just kind of like making it happen. So, the reason I say it has to be done with eventing is: Do you remember earlier when I said that surfing and diving are not the same state? Well, when you surface from a dive, you are put into the surfing state. So if we are on dive level one right now and we dive down into dive level two, when we surface back up to dive level one, we won't be in the diving state anymore, we'll be in the surfing state, and it'll play surfing music and it'll show the surfing sprite. Really quickly, I'm going to show you what the surfing sprite looks like real quick, because I feel like I've, I haven't mentioned it yet. And then afterwards, we're gonna go into the deep water. But first, it is in your characters folder, and the way that they have it is split up, very interesting actually, so, if you're using the most up-to-date version of Pokemon Essentials 17.2, you'll see that Dive and Surf are separate, where Dive is just the basic... I think this is a, like meant to be a, like a little Whalmer. It's like a little surfing boy. Um, he doesn't have the little blue outline there, as if he's bouncing in the water. And the surfing one does, as if they're moving through the water. So imagine that. You're in you're in this map, but the, the thing you're surfing on doesn't... Or the Pokemon you're surfing on doesn't have the outlines. Anyway, long ass tangent aside, let's make another underwater map. And we're going to call this one DEEP UNDERWATER in all caps because it's just, it's just deep. And then we'll make this one 3030 as well. Although, since we're doing it all through eventing, the actual, um, the actual size of the map doesn't really matter too much. Uh, the only time it matters is when you're doing like actual dives. Since we're going down a level, we're actually not going to be really diving now. Instead, it's just going to be like a glorified map, a map transfer, very similar to how we entered and exited the cave. Except instead of entering and exiting a cave, we're just moving between underwater maps. So we made one for called Deep Underwater, and this map is deep as heck. Let's go to that first layer. Let's paint this up in there. And instead, since we're deeper in the water, you know what that means? It's darker rock time. Ooh, look at that. Look how dark the look how dark and edgy these rocks are. Oh my gosh. This is just a crazy map right now, you guys. This is crazy. Okay. Do some of this, some of this. And then you know, uh post uh eh. Let's let's save that for like down here. If you want to do encounters underwater, that's pretty easy. I believe that these are just grass tiles, so you treat them as if it's a grass encounter. Anywho, check this out. We're going down into that deep underwater. And then if we wanted to, we could once again make our like bright patch. Um, and if you wanted to signify 
that there is a layer that you could go underneath. I would highly recommend using a different like tile to signify that there's deeper water. What I did was I just took one and then like painted it darker and it looks terrible, but this, is, this would be where a custom tile set comes in, where you make your own tiles to signify that you're diving even deeper. If you wanted to, you could do something similar to what they did in Route 8 Underwater for the Base Essentials maps. And like here on the side, you can see they kind of use them as like a, uh, like, it, it gets deeper, almost like a height measurement here, where you can just look at it and see that as it gets deeper and deeper into the water. You could do something similar to that if you wanted that to be something that you dive into. However... For the case of our example, we're just going to do some map transfers. So let's take this one, copy it, and paste it right here. And then instead of transferring into the underwater cave, we'll transfer you into the deep underwater. And you'll be there. Actually, yeah, you'll be there. We could make them all correspond if we want to. It would just be set. And then what we could do is insert a show text that says... Do you want to dive into the deeper chasm? Oh. oh my gosh, I can't type for the life of me today, can I? And then do a show choices. And then on yes, you transfer. And on no, nothing happens. There we go. And make it so it's an action button. There we go. So now when we step on this... And we'll make this retain, actually. If we step on this and hit the action button, aka enter, or whatever else, like if you're using a controller, anyway, um, then it will prompt you, do you want to dive into the deeper chasm? And then you will just dive down. So let's copy this and just paste a whole bunch of these here. Since this is a tutorial, I'm not going to take the time to edit all of these, so that way they all correspond. But if you wanted to, you can make them all correspond to the coordinates. There we go. And then we just do the reverse to leave the deep chasm. Do you want to surface up to, I don't know, to normal dive level? And then on yes, then instead of transferring into the deep underwater, you will transfer up into like here. There we go. Then you just take this, copy this, and paste this. So this way, theoretically, what you could do is make it so that way there's like deep dark water. If you wanted to, you could edit the metadata of this map so it's a dark map. Now, we're not done yet, though. There's something very important that has to be done here. Do you remember earlier when I said if you are in the dive state and the map you're in doesn't have a corresponding dive map, then your game will crash? Well, what you need to do is set a dive map for this map since you're in the dive state. So let's go into our game and do that. So what you could do in that dark map, if you wanted to, like you could make that dark underwater, you could set custom encounters for this. Like, oh, if you want to catch this rare underwater Pokemon, then you, you have to go into the deepest, darkest depths. That's the only way. Yeah, here we are. So now if I hit enter, the game will crash because we don't have a corresponding dive map. So let's just go into field options. Oh, wait, that's not it. <laughs> Information editors. I've already done this multiple times in the episode. It's not okay for me to mess that up now. Anyway, let's make it so... Underwater is the dive map. Since underwater doesn't have any deep water within it, this shouldn't be a problem. So, there we go. Now, if we hit enter while on this map, the game won't crash. And we can catch some rare Pokemon. Oh, wow, look at that. It doesn't have collision. Yay. <laughs> Wait, why am I able to go through all those walls? I think it's because if it's like a dark wall there, it doesn't have collision. That's pretty great. So if we wanted to, I mean, I might as well go do that real quick. Go into the go into the database, go into our underwater tile set, and make it so that way these aren't passable. There we go. That way we won't be able to just swim through everything in our in our uh, deep water map. But yeah, you can make it so like, oh, Relicanth only appears in the deep water. Whoa. Yeah, check it out. Now we can play through and our game won't crash. I'll showcase everything and then I'll do a little summary and wrap it up. How nice. How nice is uh, how nice is this looking? Do you want to dive into the deeper chasm? Yes. 
Wow, I'm in the deeper chasm. Whoa, dude, that's crazy. Do you want to surface up to normal dive level? Sure, let's get out of here. There we go, now I'm back in normal dive. Actually, let's go explore that underwater cave. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Would you like to use dive? Yes. Let's get the heck out of here. There we go, now we're in the water cave. That's pretty cool. Now, let's, uh... Let's leave this goddamn water cave. I mean, God forsaken. I mean, gosh dang. I don't curse in my video. <laughs> I curse all the time, incessantly, non-stop, in fact. But I'm trying not to. I want to say words like G dang and gosh darn it, you know? Would you like to use dive? Yes! I'm getting the heck out of here. I'm gonna go get that god dang master ball. Here we go. And there we go. I think that's it for this tutorial. I'm gonna close this down now. And I'm gonna say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, and I hope you learned a good amount from this episode, and I hope it gave you some creative ideas. Diving is something that I feel like is underutilized in a lot of fan games, and introducing underwater puzzles would... I mean, it's frustrating as hell, and nobody likes water puzzles, but, I mean, these are this is the tool set that you need to use if you want to make something super crazy and creative. I think that it'd be cool to see somebody, like, incorporate multiple dive levels into a puzzle or something, or maybe just have an entire underwater route where you're bouncing back and forth. And I mean, I think that's already been done before. It's obviously been done before, but I don't know. I think uh, diving is something that is underutilized, and who knows, maybe people will utilize it more. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll see this and realize, like, holy crap, I hate diving. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching once again. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. And um, I hope that you follow my Twitter. Nah, I don't really use Twitter. Follow my Twitch. Follow my Instagram. Uh, join the Thundaga Discord. All of these links will be in the description below. Please be sure to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry I've disappeared for so much. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I'm probably going to stream again sometime soon within the next week, I think. I'm pretty busy this weekend. I got a lot going on. But after that, um, I plan I plan on making it back. I have like the creative energy returning to me. It left me for a bit, um, but now I think it's returning. And I like to take little breaks, as you know. It's kind of obvious now at this point if you follow my channel for any time whatsoever. I, uh, I have on and off phases. I mean, that's just a very normal thing. Anyway. I hope to see you guys in a, tw in a Twitch stream sometime. I hope to see you guys in the comments uh, with some smiley faces. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you once again for watching. I appreciate you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.